worship today. As our brother mentioned, my name is Philip, and I serve as one of the pastors at Living Faith Community Church. And our senior pastor, Pastor Stephen Rowe, sends his greetings to you all. Stephen Rowe. Oh, sorry. Today's message is titled The Secret to True Contentment. And I think this is an important topic, especially now. As we have collectively gone through some very difficult times in the last two years. How do we find true contentment, especially when we're going through challenging times? When our businesses have gone under, when we lose close friends and family members, I think now more than ever, we need to know how to find contentment in all circumstances. But before we continue, I want to warn you that this passage is all too often taken out of context. And it's often misused in unhelpful and in unbiblical ways. For example, in verse 11, it says, I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. Now, people have used this verse to tell others that they just have to be happy in whatever situation they're in. I've heard, I've heard uh, small group leaders say this. I've heard pastors advise us to their congregants. But really, what that communicates is that you just have to stop complaining about your situation and be happy with whatever God has given you. Focus on what you have and stop sulking on what you don't. And sadly, I've heard people weaponize this verse to make others feel bad about expressing their true needs and desires. Another verse that's often taken out of context is in verse 13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I understand that this is a very inspirational verse. But we see this everywhere. Home decorations. On, on social media for captions and as hashtags. And athletes love to put this on their jerseys. But the question we have to ask ourselves is can we truly do all things in Christ? And this is a silly question, but can we teleport in Christ? Can we bring the dead to life in Christ? Can we get a gold medal or win a championship in Christ? What happens when athletes on both sides of the team have this verse on their jersey? Then who wins the gold medal? <laughs> Is that what Paul was getting at in verse 13? Of course not. And yet we use this verse as a blanket statement to mean all sorts of things. And it's taken on a life of its own. And as a result, misguided people into believing things about Christ and Christianity that are not biblically grounded. And 
And so today we're going to take a deeper dive into these three verses. To try to better understand what Apostle Paul really meant in these verses. And come out with a greater, richer understanding of how it is that we can truly find contentment in all circumstances. And so to guide our time today, these are the three points that we'll be looking at. The nature of discontentment. The secular pursuit of contentment. And the secret to true everlasting contentment. So let's look at the first one, the nature of discontentment. In verse 11, Paul says, I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. Verse 12, I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. There are two takeaways here. First, Paul had to learn how to be content. Now, this may be obvious, but this is a very important point. Contentment does not come naturally to us. We're not born to be content people. And the discipline of being content in all circumstances is something that doesn't happen overnight. It's something that must be learned and applied. To be content goes against the very nature of who we are and the sinful hearts that we all have. The human heart is naturally bent towards discontentment. Have you noticed how effortless it is to find reasons to be unhappy? To complain. To focus on what we don't have. It's second nature for us to think, oh, I wish I had that. That must be nice. And so the first thing we have to understand is that to be content is not natural to who we are. But here's the other thing. Paul said he has learned to be content in whatever situation. In verse 12, he says, I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. I know the secret of facing plenty and hunger. And this is also important because we falsely think that discontentment only happens when we don't have much. But that's not true. A couple of months ago, I was walking along the East River. And I saw this beautiful sailboat go just by me. And so I kind of sat, I stood there and I was admiring this sailboat and imagining to myself how nice it would have been if I owned something like that. How better my summers would be if I can take the sailboat and just travel up to upstate New York. And this sailboat was going in the direction that I was walking, so I kept looking and gazing at this beautiful boat. But not long after the sailboat had gone by, and I can still see it in the distance, I saw a yacht go by. It seemed to be about triple the size of that sailboat. 
就好似大俾只對對相對呢個帆船大呢個帆船三倍。It was white, it was brand new, it was shiny。好白色嘅，好打到立立令嘅。It must have been a yacht that maybe someone in Wall Street owns。呢呢個帆呢只遊艇就可能喺啊、uh, Wall Street 喺華爾街裏邊啲人擁有嘅。And I remember thinking to myself, I actually want that instead of sailboat。我自己同自己講啊嘛，我寧願有呢只遊艇好過只帆船啦。And you know, I was curious how much yachts go for, or yeah, how much yachts go for. 我就好好奇，想睇知道啊呢只遊艇值幾多錢。And so I googled the price of how how much is a yacht. 所以我就上網去查下呢只遊艇值幾多錢。Now the funny thing is, a couple days later, YouTube recommended a specific video. 好幾日之後，我就發覺 YouTube 去將呢個短片話俾我睇。And it was a tour of a mega yacht. 就就裏邊有個短片就介紹咗呢只遊艇嘅簡介。And so for thirty minutes, I watched that entire video。就就所以我就用三十分鐘嘅時間去睇呢個短介紹片。And then I realized the yacht that I saw the other day was nothing compared to this。如果就就比相對啊呢個短片嘅介紹呢個遊艇，對於我幾日前睇到嘅遊艇係冇冇可比美嘅。You see, the funny thing is, I have no need for a yacht or a boat. 但係事實上，我真正係冇一個需要需要一隻油艇。I'm not in a in a place of a position of desperate need。我都冇一隻好真正好好需要嘅嘢。God has blessed me with plenty。神已經好豐足嘅供應咗俾我。And yet, without even realizing, my heart was naturally wanting things I didn't have。我係好，但係好唔留意到嘅，我就發覺我自己有個傾向去想要追尋一啲我唔需要嘅嘢。The human heart is so that we are discontent even in our plenty. So, 我哋嘅人心就係雖然我哋有滿足飽足嘅時候，我哋都渴渴求我哋需要唔需要嘅嘢。In our abundance, 喺我哋唔需要嘅情況上面。Dr. Joyce Brothers, an American psychologist, said this. 一個美國嘅心理學家啊 ，Joyce Brothers 曾經講過一個。The more we have, the more we want. 我哋擁有越多，我哋想有嘅越多。And for this reason, we never have it all. 就係講邊個緣故，我哋永遠都唔可以擁有一切。Whether in plenty or in want, we all have an insatiable appetite for more. 無論我哋係有餘或者係缺乏，我哋都想渴求想有更多。The false belief is that once we have X, Y, and Z, then we will finally be content. 好多時我哋錯誤認為，如果我哋有所擁有 X, Y, and Z 嘅時候，我哋就得到滿足啦。Then we will finally arrive when we will want no more。我哋到好好快咁，我哋到咗呢個終點，我哋唔想有其他嘢。But that's not true。但係呢個唔係真嘅。Even in our plenty, especially in our plenty, we will want more. We will still be discontent。雖然我哋係好有有滿足嘅，但係我哋都仲想要更多。Our heart says it's not enough。我哋嘅心永遠都唔得到滿足。We want newer, bigger, better things all the time。我哋想要更新、更大、更好嘅嘢。We tell ourselves only if I had that, then I will be happy。我哋心，我哋成日對我哋自己咁講：如果我有嗰樣嘢就好啦。If I can get into this school， 啊，如果我入到呢間學校 ，If I can be in this relationship， 我如果有同一個人有咁嘅關係 ，If I can get that job， 如果有呢份嘅工 ，If I can live there， 如果可以住喺呢度 ，Then I will be happy and I'll be good for life。但係我就會好滿足啦。That's a lie we tell ourselves all the time. 好多時呢個就係成為我哋自對自己講嘅大話。And when we finally get the things we want, sure, we it may bring us joy and satisfaction for a little while. 所以我可能我哋就可得到擁有啲嘢嘅時候，令到我哋有暫時嘅滿足。But soon enough, we will default back to discontentment. 我哋好快就翻到去回復我哋嘅。And the sad thing is, when we get the things that we wanted, then that becomes a new norm. 當我哋擁有呢個新嘅嘢嘅時候，好快我哋就覺得呢個習以為常。And so we have to get something better from there. 我哋再更加去渴求其他我哋冇嘅嘢。And our discontentment grows more and more in our pursuit of contentment. 我哋嘅滿足就會繼續去渴求我哋想要追求嘅嘢。This is why people are in a rat race to try to make as much money as possible. 就好似一場競賽裏邊，去不斷嘅追求最好嘅。This is the reason why people are working tirelessly to try to achieve their ambitions and their goals. 
就係因為咁嘅緣故，好多人就係不斷嘅喺工作上邊去追求。They are chasing an illusion that somehow once they attain the next best thing, then they will finally have arrived。佢就有呢個幻想去追求一啲更加好嘅。But this is a never-ending vicious cycle。就係就係呢個就係永遠永無止境一個嘅追求。And this is obviously prob- problematic because no one likes being in a state of discontentment. 亦都亦都係處於一個狀態，冇人喜歡唔滿足嘅一個狀態。Discontentment robs us of joy and peace in our lives. 一個不滿足嘅將我哋嘅嘅喜樂同和平去攞走。We have a hard time enjoying what we already have if we're only constantly fixated on the things that we don't. 我哋時常專注一啲我哋冇擁有嘅嘢上邊。And so throughout the ages, people have tried to find inner peace by finding the solution to this human heart that is plagued with discontentment. 所以從係古代到而家，我哋人都係專注喺尋求點樣去得到一個平安，去解決一個唔滿足嘅方法。Which leads to my next point: the secular pursuit of contentment. 跟住帶到我想講嘅另外一點就係、是。世俗點樣對滿足嘅呢個嘅追求 ？The word content comes up in different parts of the Bible and in the New Testament。呢個字滿足呢個字喺新約裏邊有出現過好多次。And the Greek word that is typically used is archaeo that you see on you'll see on the left hand side or the right hand side。通常呢個滿足嘅字喺希臘文裏邊講到 archaeo 呢個字。We see it in Matthew 25, Luke 3, Second Corinthians 12, First Timothy, and so on and so forth. 我哋喺馬太福音、喺路加福音、喺哥林多前書、提摩太前書、希伯來書都有講過呢句字。But what's interesting is that in this passage and in this passage alone, in all of the New Testament, a different word is Paul uses a different word for the word content. 但喺呢個腓立比書裏邊，保羅用咗好一個好特別、好另一個字去形容滿足。And that word is altarkis. 呢、这個呢、这個希伯呢、这個呢、这個希臘文就係 archaeos。You see, certain words are immediately associated with a particular religion or school of thought。好多時有啲嘅字眼，我哋好一聽到呢啲字眼就好好容易讓讓我哋去聯聯想到另外一個思啊。So, so if I said karma or reincarnation, we might think of Buddhism or Hinduism right away。如果當聽到有講到報應或者輪迴嘅時候，我哋好容易聯想到去佛教同印度教。If I said Hanukkah, we think of Judaism。我如果講光明節嘅，我哋就會知道係猶太教。And likewise, Altarkis was a word so closely associated to Stoicism that people would have immediately attached this word, this word that we see, to Stoic philosophy。所以呢個嘅 Altarkis 呢個嘅嘅啊希臘文佢。好容易，我哋讓我哋去聯想到希啊斯多葛呢個忍堅忍主義嘅呢個思想嘅説法。And this word is often described to talk about self-sufficiency or self-contained, and Paul intentionally uses this word。呢個字眼好多時就係形容自己需要自己嘅滿足去有。Now we have to keep in mind that Stoicism was a leading school of thought in Greece during the time of Paul. 我哋需要知道呢個斯多葛呢個呢個嘅説法喺當時係喺希臘嚟講係一個有領導嘅一個嘅學説。Nowadays we reduce Stoicism to simply just a few life lessons or a good principle to live by. 但係到到我哋而家嚟講呢個呢個斯多葛嘅呢個主義呢個説法。對於人生嚟講，即係一個好簡單嘅人生嘅道理。But back then, Stoicism was more than just philosophy。但喺當時喺希臘嗰時候，呢、这個斯多葛呢個呢個學説唔單止係一個哲學。It was a way of life。係一個過生活嘅一種嘅方式。It was a religion of a sort。亦都好似一個宗教嘅形式。It explained cosmology。佢解釋到宇宙。The origin and makeup of our being。呢個宇宙嘅來源，人嘅來源。It gave a particular worldview by which people interpreted and lived this life. 就俾到人一個一個人好特別嘅一個人生觀，教導人點去過活。You see, Stoicism says there are things that we can and cannot control in this world. 呢個斯多葛呢個忍呢個堅忍嘅嘅説法係教我哋點啊話俾我哋聽，我哋唔能夠去掌管一切。What we cannot control are the external things that are happening to us. 我哋唔能夠控制嘅就係外在嘅嘢。But what we can control is our internal response to these things。我哋可以估可以控制嘅就係
。我哋內在對外在嘅回應。And Stoicism says that our job is to focus on what we can control and not on what we cannot control。啊，呢個斯多葛主義就係叫我哋。去控制我哋可以內心可以控制嘅 ，namely our emotions and our response to things that are happening to us。主要嚟講就係我哋嘅內心嘅情緒同埋我哋嘅對外在嘅反應。And to not allow ourselves to be troubled or affected by these circumstances。叫我哋唔好為啲外在嘅嘢讓我哋嘅心情得到影響。Here's what Seneca, a famous Stoic philosopher, said。呢個就係一個 Seneca 一個好著名嘅斯多葛。主義嘅一個學者咁樣講 ：The happy man is content with his present lot, no matter what it is, and is reconciled to his circumstances。快樂嘅人滿足佢自己之前嘅命運，唔管佢哋係乜什麼，並且甘於他嘅處境。This is the Stoic way。呢個就係斯多葛嘅嘅嘅理論。And it sounds very familiar, similar to other. Schools of thought, even Buddhism, for example. This kind of idea is very similar to what we know from the Buddhist teachings. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. Which says to remove all your desires for pleasures in this world. You see, the Stoic line was man should be sufficient unto himself for all things, and able by the power of his will to resist the force of circumstances. 有個斯多葛裏邊有句好好出名嘅句語就係：人應足以應付一切，並且能夠藉著意志力量抵擋環境嘅力量。That's the concept behind the word autarkist that Paul uses. 呢個就係保羅喺度用 autarkis 呢個字嘅背後嘅意思。Gordon Fee, a New Testament scholar, says this: On the surface, Paul's explanation looks like a meteor fallen from Stoic sky into his epistle. 喺美國一個神學家 Gordon Fee 裏邊講到一句話，佢話表面上佢睇解釋就好似一個喺斯多葛流星墮墜落嚟，就喺保羅書信裏邊。Verses 11 and 12 by itself sounds very much like Paul has adopted a secular philosophy into his Christian writing. So in the first verse, in the first verse, we see that Paul has used this Stoic philosophy in his writing. I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger abundantly. He sounds like a Stoic philosopher here. 佢嗰個講到，我知道如何低降低，我知道如何富足。在任何情況下，我都會面對富足和飢餓，富足和需要嘅秘訣。Now, no, sorry. Now the question is, why would Paul intentionally use this word of all the words that he could have used? 呢個問題就係點解保羅要用到呢句字眼 ？This is what we have to know. Philippi is a Greek city. 我哋需要知道。And Stoicism had very strong influence in Greek society. 喺斯多葛主義當時係對於希臘嚟講係一個好大嘅影響。In fact, we see in Acts chapter 17 that when Paul is in Athens, he debates specifically with Stoic philosophers. 喺《使徒行傳》第十七章都裏邊有講過，保羅當時係同一啲斯多葛嘅嘅哲學家喺度辯論。And because the Christians in Philippi were converts, there's a good chance they still held on to certain cultural worldviews unique to that region. So, at that time, many Philippians, many Christians, were because of the Greek philosophy of the Greek philosophy, they became Christians. So, they were familiar with the Greek philosophy of the Greek philosophy. You see, Paul is using a concept that would have been familiar to the people he's writing to. So, Paul is using this word, this concept, to explain it to the people he's writing to. A worldview they still might be holding on to without even knowing. This is what he was most interested in. But then he masterfully flips the script. 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 But then he masterfully Verses 11 and 12 by itself would have been Stoic philosophy, 
But verse 13, in the context of 11 and 12, makes it radically different. When Paul says he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him, he's talking specifically about the ability to be content in all circumstances. Stoicism says you must find inner peace by your own sheer power. Apostle Paul says it's not by my strength, but by the power of Christ. You see, the two may seem very similar, and they might be going for the same end goal, which is to be content in all circumstances. But here's the radical difference between the two. In Stoicism, you have to lie to yourself. You have to keep telling yourself that no matter what situation you are in, that you don't care. That it doesn't bother you. When it really does. And then when you repeat a lie enough times, then you begin to believe that to be true. And the problem with Stoicism is that while it may eventually shield you from disappointments and the problem of pain and suffering, it also robs you of the joy of life. You are living with the constant worldview that the worst can happen and you should expect it. Stoicism said that, says that the way to contentment in all circumstances is to detach yourself from all your desires and all your emotions, to suppress this part of your being. And if we're honest with ourselves, that's no way to live. It's a self-defense mechanism that robs you of the joy of life. But on the other hand, Paul has a radically different approach to the same goal, and that's what we'll look at as our final point. The secret to true everlasting contentment. A word that may be a vocabulary that may be missing in the Stoic uh, philosophy is the word joy. You must not be affected or swayed by emotions of the circumstances around you. And yet we see that in the opening verse of today's passage, Paul starts by saying, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. Now what's interesting is that Paul uses this word more frequently, the word rejoice more frequently in the short epistle than in any of his other writings. In just four chapters, the word rejoice comes up nine times. A couple of examples, Philippians 3.1, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. Philippians 4.4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Now we have to keep in mind that Paul is in prison as he's writing this letter. And many scholars believe that this epistle that Paul is writing is right before he is executed. And yet Paul has this theme of rejoicing in the face of even death. And as I was meditating on this passage and the theme of rejoicing, I was reminded of another scene in the Gospels. 
。當我去寫我我寫預備呢段呢段講道嘅時候，我就就睇到提提醒我喺一段嘅經文。In Luke chapter 10, we see that Jesus sends out the disciples in pairs. We see that Luke chapter 10, we see that Jesus sends out the disciples in pairs. And they go out and they preach the gospel and they cast out demons and they do all these things that they could have never imagined doing before. They go out and they preach the gospel and they cast out demons and they do all these things that they could have never imagined doing before. They go out and they preach the gospel and they cast out demons and they do all these things that they could have never imagined doing before. They go out and they preach the gospel and they cast out demons. They're on the peak of their spiritual high. They're 灵命上都系个高峰 And so we're told that they come back rejoicing and saying, "Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name." So he 翻到嚟去同耶稣讲，主啊，我哋我嘅虽然啲魔鬼都为你嘅名而屈膝。This is Jesus' response to them. 但系基督点样回应佢哋咧 ？Do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you. 唔好因为魔鬼顺服而令你喜悦。But rejoice. That your names are written in the book of life. You see, the disciples based their joy on earthly circumstances. We also see that these disciples are based on earthly circumstances. On earthly success. Because earthly success. But what Jesus is teaching in this moment is for the disciples to look beyond the ever-changing circumstances of this world. But Jesus is teaching in this moment is for the disciples to look beyond the ever-changing circumstances of this world. Things come and go in this life. And as long as we're fixing our source of joy in these things, then we will always be tossing and turning with the waves of this world. If we're focused on the earthly things, we will always be tossing and turning with the waves of this world. And instead, Jesus is teaching them to anchor their ultimate joy in something infinitely greater. So Jesus 就教導佢哋要注目喺一啲喺永恆嘅嘢上邊。Something that cannot be changed. 一啲永恆不變嘅。And it's this. 呢個就係咁。That their names are written in the book of life. 呢個就係佢嘅名，佢哋嘅名字喺生記載喺生命冊上邊。Stoicism says, "Don't have joy, and you won't be disappointed." 呢個詩歌個主義誒個學説就係，如果沒有快樂，你就唔會失望啊。Jesus says, "Have the right kind of joy, and you'll never be disappointed." But Jesus Christ's joy is the eternal joy. The reality is that nothing on earth will ever truly satisfy us because we were made for something so much greater. This is the real truth. We are because we are because we are made for something so much greater. C.S. Lewis said, "If I find in myself desires which cannot, which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world." C.S. Lewis 曾經咁講過：如果我發現自己嘅慾望喺呢個世界上沒有任何東西可以得到滿足，唯一合乎邏輯嘅解釋就係我屬於另外一個世界嘅。We can try to fill our longings with the things of this world, but it will only rattle in our hearts and still leave us discontented. 我哋可以嘗試用呢個世界嘅事去滿足我哋。The longings we all have， 我哋所屬於我哋嘅。For love, for beauty, for acceptance, for esteem, self-esteem, for worth, all these things can only truly be satisfied in Christ. 所有我哋所有得到满足嘅嘢，唯独可以喺耶稣基督里面去得可以得到满足。And as long as we're looking to the things of this world to define who we are, then we will always end up short and disappointed. 如果我哋喺揾咗地上嘅嘢嘅时候，我哋唯独只可以啊得唔到呢个满足。And this is what this was the secret to Paul's contentment. This is what Paul was able to satisfy his longings. You see, at a point in Paul's life, he too was chasing after finding his ultimate satisfaction in the things of this world. We see in Paul's life, we see that he was chasing after finding his ultimate satisfaction in the things of this world. But eventually, he realized that all of that was in vain, and that he learned to anchor himself in Christ. He finally discovered that he was chasing after. Look at what Paul says in Philippians three. Ah, Paul in Philippians three, verse three, says, "Says though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh, also if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless." 
。腓立比书嘅第三章 ，verses four to six， 系第四节至第六节。其實我可以靠我可以，我也可以靠肉體。若是別人想他可以靠肉體，我更可以靠著了。我第八天受割禮，我以色列族民便雅悯的人，是希伯來人所生的希伯來人，就是律法說我是法利賽人，就若熱心說我是逼巴教會的，就在律法的意説我是無可指責的。Paul had the right education. Paul 有真正有一個好嘅教育。He was trained under the great greatest Hebraic scholar of his time. 佢被當時最好嘅學者去訓練。He had all the right connections. 佢有最好嘅關係。And he was an up and coming young protege of his time. 佢當時係一個好受尊會受一個好受嘅嘅。His resume was incredibly impressive, and even his enemies in the Jewish camp recognized that. His 履历表系好好受人感扬嘅。And that's what Paul's saying in verses four through six. 呢个就系保罗喺第四章到第六节所讲嘅。But then look what he says in starting in verse seven. 嗱喺第七节佢咁讲到。Says, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing. Worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For His sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through Christ, faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. 只是我先前以为我与与我有益的，我现在因基督在当当作有损的。And this is the contentment we're all invited to have. 呢个就系我哋需要满足我哋个人需要嘅有嘅满足。Just like Paul, we can learn to be content in whatever situation we are in. 就好似保罗咁，我哋需要学习得到呢个嘅满足。Whether it's in plenty or in hunger. 无论系有富足，系我哋有饱饿。In abundance or in need. 无论有有余嘅，有缺乏嘅。We can escape from the prison of discontentment and rejoice because our names are written in the book of life. 因為我哋嘅名字喺生命冊上面，可可以讓我哋喺呢個唔滿足嘅環境裏邊去逃脱。Because the greatest is still yet to come. 因為最好、最美好嘅都會有來臨嘅日子。And I just want to end with this: How is our name written in the book of life? 我想完結之前，我想講，我哋點點解我哋嘅名字可以有喺生命冊上邊 ？You see, the book of Philippians is、uh, an argument that Paul is building up, and we looked at chapter four, which is the conclusion, and then we looked at chapter three, which is his argument. But then, he, when we look at one chapter before, we begin to see a whole picture of why it is that for Paul, Christ is the most important. 我哋可以睇到第四章係成為一個總結。啊、uh, ！喺睇保罗点样去愿意喺让我哋喺生命里边能够得到满足。In Philippians two, we find one of the most beautiful passages in all of the New Testament. 喺腓立比书第二章有一段喺喺新约里边最靓嘅一个嘅嘅经文。Tim Keller says, if the Bible were a mountain range, this passage would be one of the peaks of it. Tim Keller 牧师曾经讲过呢呢段经文系好好美丽嘅。And I want to read that to you now, Philippians two three through eleven. 喺腓立比书第二章第五至七节。Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. 你们应当以基督耶稣的心为心，他本有神的形象，不以自己与神同等为强夺的，反倒虚己，取了牢固的形象，成为人的形象。Jesus, though God, emptied Himself, took on the form of servant, and He was born in the likeness of men. Jesus, He Himself, He emptied Himself, became a servant. Why? 
点解 ？For the very purpose of living the perfect life, you and I need to live in order to get to heaven. 就系为到系你同我一样去倒空，去去过神形象嘅缘故。And ultimately, to die the death we all deserved for the sins that we commit in our lives. 因为我哋系需要为我哋所做嘅罪去认悔改。Our names are written in the book of life, not because we've earned it. 我哋嘅名字喺生命册上边唔系我哋赚得嘅。But at the cost of Jesus giving up His life for us. 因为系耶稣基督奉献咗佢生命嘅缘故。He is the anchor for our eternal salvation. 佢哋系系救恩嘅一个我哋要专注嘅一样嘢。But it came at the cost of Him being plunged into the sea of God's wrath for our sins. 就系因为佢倒空咗佢自己。为喺神嘅愤怒底下为我哋牺牲。Jesus died the death we deserve so that we may have the eternal life we don't deserve。耶稣基督嘅牺牲，让我哋得到呢个嘅嘅生命系我哋唔配得嘅生命。And if this Christ did this for us, then what challenge can we not go through in this life？ 如果呢个基督为我哋咁样过活嘅时候，我哋喺生命面对嘅困难嘅时候，我哋有乜嘢可以满足？ With confidence in knowing that the best is yet to come. 我会有信心嘅知道有更美好嘅事会嚟紧。Apostle Paul, in prison awaiting his trial or execution, still could rejoice because of the surpassing knowledge of knowing Christ. 保罗喺满喺监狱里边就将会被处决嘅时候，佢仍然有呢个满足，因为知道有更好嘅事嚟紧。He doesn't need to rely on the things of this world for his greatest fulfillment because he found it in Jesus. And because Christ, because of Christ crucified and resurrected, you and I can enjoy the good times in this life, but also overcome the challenging times, knowing again that the best is yet to come. Because our names are written in the book of life. And I pray that this would be true of you today. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we were able to spend some time studying your precious word today. God, we thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ for us all. And giving us hope that surpasses all knowledge and understanding in this world. 俾咗我哋一个希望去超过呢个世界所有嘅一切。I pray that we would learn more and more to base our our excitement and our hope and our contentment in what you have done for us, rather than the things of this world. 主，我哋祈求我哋可以去去学习，去喺你里边揾到呢个嘅满足。God, we are slow to. Learn your truth. 主，我哋好，我哋学习得好慢，去去嚟喺你嘅真理上边。But in your patience, I pray that you would teach us and guide us, so that we can look more and more upward in you and have our our lives anchored in Jesus Christ. 主，系求你嘅耐心，让我哋可以喺耶稣基督里边去继续去学习。We thank you and we pray this in Jesus Christ's name. 我哋奉啊主耶稣基督嘅名去祈求。Amen.